Hey guys, here's a breakdown for this car fire effect I created in Houdini Axiom. I hope you enjoy. I do want to preface this by saying I used Axiom for this effect. You could very easily recreate this in default Houdini Pyro Solver though, um, and it would give you a very similar effect. I just used Axiom for its speed. First thing I did was come over and import the geometry I needed. Uh, I had an FBX photo scan of this car that I found on Sketchfab. I will link it below. Um, and I just imported that with the default settings added a convert node uh the car comes in pretty massive as you can see it's pretty huge i used a transform to get this down to scale and i do have a little quick rough trick for getting things to scale in houdini when it comes to simulations my personal go-to is to add a uh, mocap biped one um and the mocap biped as you can see is if i just turn the fire off for a moment yes just turn the fire off you can see the mocap biped is to scale. He's a average height uh, male, accurate to world scale. So I just brought him in, went into the car, and I went into ghost other objects so I could still see him. And I just really roughly scaled him down. This is not a perfect way to scale objects in Houdini, but if you're doing a personal project and you want really quick, rough, accurate world scale, um, then this is a really easy way to do it. All right, thank you, biped, but we won't need him anymore. Um, what I did next was just uh, transform it, and then this rough alembic is for the export of Blender, because I did render this in Blender. You could easily render this in Karma, but that's not what this tutorial is about. In the fire, I just copied the exact same FBX import workflow, um, just straight from this node into this one. You could very easily just put down an object merge um, and import directly from the transform node instead of copying and pasting in, which I'm sure would be a little bit more efficient, but you know, there's a lot of ways to do things in Houdini. <laughs> um, after that, I just scattered a bunch of points onto the geometry of the car. Um, there we go. Uh, the reason I scattered so many points is because I really want control over the fidelity of the pyro sim and how the fire can spread around. If you've got very little points, it's going to be really hard for you to get a definite form to the fire and it's going to be really hard to control later and as this is a static mesh it's really not that intensive to have this many points um, especially for houdini houdini can handle it the next thing i did was an attribute noise and if you have watched my previous smoke sourcing tutorial or breakdown that i did for the fanatic uh igi cinematic you'll be pretty familiar with this workflow so far um, but we add an attribute noise uh, to the density field on float, not vector. And if you want to see the effect that you added, you have to click on the information of the node and click on density. And then you'll be able to actually see the density field that you're affecting. In here, I just, I just tweak the element size. And all that's going to do is just increase or decrease the patches of fire on the car. I like this amount, so I just left it at that. And then I added very slight animation to the um, density. As you can see, it's pretty hard to see when you play it in slow motion, but if I roll through it like this, you can see that it's animated ever so slightly. All this is going to do is when I source these particles, it's going to allow the fire to just roll over the car as if it's igniting more of it or rolling across the car, which is an effect I like. After that, I had a group node and I name it emit. It doesn't really matter what you name it, just as long as it makes sense and it's easy to reference later. And I made a rule here so that any point with a density above one is targeted in this group. And after I've targeted that and selected these, I can come into a blast node and choose the group I want to delete, which is emit. So every point with a density over one has now been deleted, leaving me with this. These points I left are the ones I'm going to use to source my fire. You can very easily change your selection. You can delete non-selected, so it's an inverted selection. So you can have everything other than that selected. And it's really easy to see uh, the changes you make um, if you have this this group selected here. You can see I've got a much more scattered um, and noisy selection of points now. So it's really easy to work backwards from this point and get some uh, sourced particles that you really like. Wonderful. After that, I have an, another attribute randomized. This time I'm targeting the P scale, which is the point size scale. Um, and I've added some noise to that. I've gone ahead and visualized it here the same way as the density. Just click into the information and click P scale. Uh, the reason I've done this is to add some variety and some flickering and that kind of detail to the fire. Um, I am not 
super aware of this works the same way in the normal Houdini power solver as it does in Axiom, but uh, I like to throw that in there as well. Um, these nodes I have here, I did find from a very useful tutorial. I will put on screen and link below now. And it has great resources for Axiom. Uh, if you would love to check that out and see more about the specifics of the fire and why these nodes do the things they do. Moving on, we have another attribute noise to density. If you're doing the same thing, just to add it, uh, change it up. It's just a different size. And then we have an attribute noise, again, a density. And I merge those two together to get some scattered fields like this, um, which we will use to drive more visual interest within the points we already have. Um, which again makes the fire flicker differently. Certain parts will be more intense, less intense. It just adds a little bit of variety to the to the fire simulation. After that, I've added a point of velocity in order to add some velocity to the points. <laughs> Obviously, um, the reason I've done this is to again add more visual interest. If you give the points velocity, the pyro sourcing will inherit the velocity of the points and give you more flickers. Um, in my case, I also used it to point the fire upwards and away from the car, the direction I want the wind to blow in my scene. Uh, as you can see, by the way, these are spiked up in this direction, um, which is just, I just added curl noise and then I added some conical noise. And then this is the direction I used in order to get it to point up and up and away. Um, really simple, really easy, and can add a lot of visual interest, really easy to art direct as well. Um, and if you do want to visualize the velocity of your points you have to come over to the sidebar here and click this little button which says display point trails otherwise you won't be able to visualize the point velocities effect just right down here uh, right below the one that looks very similar which is display normals all right under this i have a volume rasterize attributes and i am just rasterizing density and v which is velocity um and making them into a form that axiom can source uh, and that the normal houdini pyro solver can source as well um, there is a node in Axiom called Axiom Point Rasterize, which does a very similar thing. However, it doesn't have the options to target uh, multiple attributes in the way that I want, at least not that I know of. So I just stuck to the normal volume rasterize attributes. And under that, I have a blast node, which is targeting the attribute density. And then I invert it here with delete and unselected. So it's targeting everything that isn't density. Um, I'm not quite sure how it works in preserving velocity that we got from the point velocity, but it does. Um, so <laughs> in this workflow, it seems to work pretty well. However, if you are following along or trying to tweak something in the normal pyro solver, I don't think you would need to follow the steps of adding the blast or adding um, all of these attribute randomizers, but it's all up to you and what kind of simulation you're looking for. However, this blast node, I don't think you need. Over here is more Axiom stuff. Um, I'm using the name node to name density temperature and also to name it fuel, which Axiom Solver needs in order to actually source your uh, power simulation. Otherwise, it won't emit anything. So I've just sourced those two and merged it back with the original blast, um, or it could be your original volume rasterized attributes. Um, but whatever node it came from that you're naming, I merge it back with that. And if we go back up really quick, you might have noticed that this transform node has a line coming down. Um, into this VDB from polygons. All this VDB from polygons is, is our collision for the car so that pyro simulation can collide with the car and uh, not just clip through it. This is a simple VDB from polygon setup. Uh, here's the voxel size I used for my simulation. Again, depending on the scale, yours will vary. And uh, the only thing you need to change for this in the case of Axiom is to set it to fog v VDB um, and set it as collision. And then I add a point V and a collision vel. However, I don't have any velocity on the collision itself, because um, it's not moving, but it's just good practice to add that for any animated um, meshes you want to collide with. And then I just merge all of that together uh, for this very strange cloud looking vehicle. Um, looks like someone just stuck a, bu a bunch of cotton balls to it. Um, and then we get to plug it straight into the Axiom solver. So now Axiom is taking those points and sourcing them. You can see where the thin outline of the car is. Um, where the collision is bisecting the sourced particles. But you'll notice that there's no fire sourced on this uh, Axiom Solver. If we play this just a little bit, you can see that it's some very lovely fine smoke we have. However, there's no fire. Um, 
but we did set the temperature up here with fuel. So in order to visualize this fire that is there, I put down a pyro bake volume um, and I come in and I just enable fire, just tick it on right there. I have smoke disabled uh, on this pyro bake volume, but you could very easily have both of them on or you could have a uh, scatter on as well. It really depends on the look you're going for. But for mine, I just wanted to have fire only. And once you've got your fire visualized, you can go into your Axiom Solver and go into the simulation tab and tweak all of the settings to your liking. Um, here are the values I've used for this, but again, it's gonna take a lot of experimentation and uh, art direction of the fire to get it exactly how you want. Um, again, the tutorial I mentioned beforehand has a great deep dive into the dynamics of the fire and I will have that linked in the description if you want more detail on the settings I'm using here uh, and why I'm using them. In terms of just pure pyro simulation, that's as far as you need to go for that. Um, you have your fire, you can render this in Karma XPU, you can take this out as a VDB and render it in uh, Blender cycles like I did, but um, you have your VDB, you can export the sequence just like any other simulation in Houdini and put that wherever you want. I did, however, want to add some embers, which I usually do in Blender because I'm more familiar with the, the particle system there, but I wanted to improve my workflow with the um, particles in Houdini. So I decided to scatter some particles on the existing fire, which gives you um, some very excited particles um, that follow the volume of the fire that you've scattered them onto. Next to this node here, you have a blast node, which is targeting uh, velocity um, and then I invert this again to target everything that isn't velocity so that it deletes everything from this pyro simulation that is not the velocity attribute because that's all we're going to need to advect these particles so there's no need in wasting processing power bringing in density and temperature and fuel when all we need is the velocity um, so that's all this blast node is doing Underneath here, we have this attribute from volume node, which is targeting the V attribute, uh, so velocity. And that's just taking the velocity attribute from the volume, uh, and it is taking the points that we scattered on the volume, and it's gonna take the velocity from the volume and apply it to the points, so that the points can be lifted up and thrown around in the exact same way that the fire is. And then if that, we have this little pop net, which we're gonna jump inside of now. Really simple pop uh, simulation. Uh, we have a pop source, which is bringing in the first context geometry, which is our attributes from volumes on the scatter, um, which is bringing in our velocity. And we have a pop advect by volumes here, which is sourcing the second context geometry, which in our case is bringing in uh, only the velocity from our volume, which is exactly what we want. And I have that set to update position. I have really mixed results when I use this node. Sometimes update force is better. Sometimes update velocity is better. I really don't have a concrete answer as to which one you should use all the time uh, because there probably isn't a concrete answer for which one you should use all the time. But in this case, I'm using update position and that works best for me. And I have it set to trace RK3. And you can increase the velocity scale or decrease your velocity scale depending on how much you want the volume velocity attribute to affect your particles. And then I just have a pop force in here which is going to throw around my particles, um, add a bit of turbulence, add a bit of noise, just to give them a bit of life, uh, give, make them a bit more dynamic. Um, again, all of these things are completely up to you. If you want to have your particles going crazy, if it's a huge forest fire, then maybe you want your particles to be going crazy with much wider swirls. However, mine's a relatively small car fire, um, <laughs> as far as fires go. So I didn't want the particles to be thrown around um, too insane. As you can see, they just kind of flitter around. Uh, and then I added a pop drag, which adds a little bit of air resistance. Without the pop drag, the particles um, kind of go crazy. So I've just that dampened them down a little bit um, so that they're within reason. After that, we've got a merge, uh, which you don't need. Uh, it just comes default with the pop net um, shelf tool. Um, if you had multiple pop sources, etc., like that, you could merge them. In this case, it's not doing anything. You could wire the pop drag directly into the pop solver and get the exact same result. I've added a ground plane here. Admittedly, you don't really need this. Uh, if your particles are gonna be advected upwards, they're not really gonna contact the ground, but I just added one for safe measure. After that, it just comes into a merge and you get your output for the pop net. After that, I just cache the pop net so that I'd have to simulate it every time I want to preview them or make a change. And then I've gone ahead and deleted um, random IDs uh, here which is just a filter expression so that I have way less points because I don't need all those embers. After this, I just have a retime node so that I can have the sub steps calculated from the simulation in order to add this trail, which is uh, 
tightly packed between behind the particles in order to have some of them have this nice, lovely trail when they flick around. Now, if I play that back without the substats, then you can see you get this really nice effect that the ones that are moving much faster, they get a little trail, and the ones that are moving slower, then they have less of a trail. After that, you can just, you can color them if you want, uh, give them material if you're rendering them in Houdini. I did not, so I opted to export them as an Alembic, which is the form I bring them into Blender in. Uh, if we zoom back up quickly to my very messy node network, coming down from the initial volume simulation of the fire, um, if you are going to be rendering this in Houdini, then you're going to want to drop down another pyrobake volume uh, afterwards so that you can um, art direct the fire um, and add all of your gradients, your intensity scales, how much you want them to, you know, blur, all of that stuff. Um, it's all controlled in here, which in turn will control the material in. Houdini. Again, not an in-depth pyro tutorial. I don't think I'm qualified enough to do that. Um, just a simple breakdown. But if you want to look into that, again, it's in the, the description. Running back over here. Sorry, we're all over the place on these nodes. It's not my cleanest uh, node network. <laughs> um, after the trail of the embers, I have just gone ahead and added a copy to points and I've added a sphere plugged in so that my points have a physical representation. I was experimenting with some uh, Karma rendering to give them a emissive material to render in Karma. Um, and if you wanted to realize them, this is the way I would go about it. However, I'm sure there's ways to do it with splines and other things like that. Uh, and then just for visualiz visualization, sorry, uh, I've them all in the bottom so I can see them all together. Um, but I mean, that's really it. It's a fairly simple setup. Uh, even if it doesn't look so. Um, Axiom does have a lot of nodes which, you know, build out the network, like these two names and, you know, stuff like that. Um, however, the same principles apply for base Houdini, uh, Pyro Bake, sorry, Pyro Solver. Um, you bring in your mesh, you create your points, you rasterize them, uh, and then you plug them into your solver. Um, you might need a volume source uh, first for Pyro, and then you simulate your fire, and then you tweak your effects. It's it's all really the same workflow, just different ways of going about it. But yes, I hope that that window into my chaotic workflow was somewhat helpful for you. Uh, I will be dropping more videos uh, shortly on a few more topics, uh, breakdowns, tutorials, etc. So if that interests you, I would be very grateful if you would subscribe and like the video, as you'll be seeing more of me. But other than that, take care. Peace.